Now this lovely chip here, 40 pin dip, is a Z80 CPU, Zilog Z80, I suppose you could call it Z80, and it came out in the late 70s and was very popular in the early 80s in all sorts of computers, especially in the UK, uh, where it was actually the CPU used in the first computer that I ever owned, the Sinclair ZX81, and it was the first CPU that I ever learned assembly language on. So I've got a bit of a soft spot for it, and I thought as a bit of a departure from my 6502 projects, I'd do something to do with the Z80, so I'm making a Z80 single board computer. Now, I'm not the first person to make a Z80 single board computer, obviously, there have been loads of those done, and it's not even the first Z80 single board computer I've ever made. Um, I made one on solderless breadboard uh, about a year or two ago, which sort of worked. And I made one involving an Arduino Mega 2560 on uh, on PCB, um, which was frankly a bit of a boring project. Didn't really enjoy that one. Uh, so I thought I'd make one, go back to basics, make it using, try to avoid using Arduinos and stuff like that, and just using the real chips and the real memory. Um, and I'll show you the process right through from start to finish. Um, this is my really, really rough diagram, sort of like a first attempt at a schematic, just really showing that I, was, I want to have a Z80, some ROM and some RAM configured in some way, a serial interface so I can connect up to a keyboard and a screen, and some kind of I.O. so I can have some mass storage like a floppy disk or a USB memory stick, something like that. Next, in Easy EDA, I've uh, grabbed hold of the Z80 CPU and the other components and plonked them in place. And the most important thing to do is link up all the address buses together and all the data buses together so that the main chips are linked to one another. And at this point, I've sort of decided that uh, the UART, to, so the serial connection, um, should be the 16C550 because I researched a few different chips that could do a sort of similar thing and that seems to be quite an easy one to get hold of in a dip package because I want to do all of this thing with through hole components and it looked like uh, one that seems quite easy to use and it's got some quite nice features like a 16 byte FIFO in there to just which should probably make communication a bit more uh, well a little bit less prone to error uh, obviously the CPU needs a clock and so I I think this, this CPU I'm actually using is a slightly more modern Z80 so I think that can go up to 20 megahertz. So that needs its own crystal oscillator and the UART also needs a separate crystal oscillator. You could use the same one for both but then you'd link the two frequencies. You'd be locked into, uh, you'd be limited by the UART frequency which is a bit slower. And I didn't want to do that. I wanted to run the Z80 at any frequency. The UART needs a 1.8432 megahertz crystal, which seems quite a slow thing to run your Z80 on. I need to provide some sort of reset circuit. So this is just the basic plumbing to get a Z80 running. You need a clock, you need a reset circuit, which provides a low going pulse initially. When you turn on, it's got to take the reset line low for I think four clock cycles, but I think this reset circuit I've got here with 10 microfarads in as the, the charging capacitor would probably take it low for about a quarter of a second, which is, I don't know, thousands of clock cycles. Um, I've also linked up the NMI, the non-maskable interrupt pin of the Z80, and I've got a button to take that low if I want to do a non-maskable interrupt. There's also an external interrupt that I've provided, because this Z80 card, I'm calling it my Z80 playground, uh, I want it to be as adaptable and flexible as possible, so I've provided for an external interrupt coming from off the board as well. Uh, very often the trickiest bit of doing these sort of things is the memory mapping. So you've got to provide a way of letting the Z80 choose whether it's going to write or read from ROM or RAM or I.O. Now in the Z80, the memory map is one thing and the I.O., the, in the input and output map, is a completely separate thing, so that's makes that nice and simple uh, and what I want to do is give you 64k of RAM uh, which is the maximum amount of memory that the Z80 can talk to and then also up to 32k of ROM so what I've done is I've sort of laid one over the other so that whenever you read you could be reading either from ROM or RAM but when you write you're always writing to RAM so you could potentially read from a certain memory location and it could be ROM and then write back to it and you'd be writing to RAM. 
but because I want this thing to be flexible, I've provided a few jumpers um, to set how this thing works. So you can actually, with one jumper, set the ROM to be on permanently. Um, and you can also set whether you want 32K of ROM or 16K of ROM. And that ROM will sit right at the bottom of memory. So it addresses naught up to 16K would be ROM, and then from 16K up to 64K would be RAM. The I.O. is pretty simple, really, um, because I've only got, as it currently stands, one I.O. thing that I want to talk to, which is the UART. So I've just said if address line 3 is high, then you're selecting UART. Anything else, you're selecting some other I.O. that I've not implemented yet. And that's pretty much all there is on this board. Uh, there's just some connectors that I've put on there. There's obviously a power connector, some LEDs to show what's going on some capacitors, um, plenty of IDC connectors to bring every single line of the Z80 out so you can plug it into a solderless breadboard and experiment a little bit. And there's also the connection for the FTDI serial cable, what I call FTDI anyway, which is basically serial running at TTL levels, so 5 volt serial instead of RS232, which is plus 12 and minus 12 volt serial. And the only other complexity of it really is that you can switch the ROM on and off. You can uh, start up, well, it always starts up with ROM enabled and then the CPU can choose to switch the ROM off, which is pretty useful when, when you're doing CPM because you might want to boot from the ROM and then once you've booted, turn the ROM off and run uh, off of disk. I haven't yet thought about how I'm going to do any of the disk stuff, that, so that's not implemented and that will come on a second board. So it won't actually be a single board computer, it'll be a double board computer. Um, but there's a little trick that I've used with the 16C550, the UART. Um, it has, I noticed in the data sheets, a couple of user selectable pins, user controllable pins. You can turn these pins um, that on and off. OP1 and OP2, they're usable, user selectable pins. When you do a reset, they both go high but you can send an instruction to the 16C550 and tell it to turn them low. Uh, so I've connected up the ROM to that. The ROM select logic uses those. So when you first reset the CPU, it also resets the 16C550. The ROM will be enabled, and then you can send a command to later turn the ROM off or even turn it back on again, I suppose you could. The next stage in easy EDA is to create a PCB and I always follow exactly the same pattern with my PCBs. I create a 10 by 10 centimeter PCB. I put a ground plane on the bottom side, a 5 volt plane or VCC plane on the top side. I always put my power connectors in the top left. I always put mounting holes so I can put some legs on the thing so it doesn't slide around on the table. I um, round the corners off because I don't like sharp corners on my PCBs. And um, I plonk all the components on when they look about right, click the auto root button and let it do its stuff. And if it doesn't manage to auto root first time, I move the connectors around a little bit and keep trying again until it does. And once I've done that, we end up in the 3D view. And you can take a look at the PCB, how it's going to come out when it's finished. It's worth having a good old check over at this stage, I always find, because I quite often miss things or position things in impossible places that can couldn't work in real life uh, and then once I've finished with that I usually put a date stamp on it so I know what version it is and when I made it and then I upload it to JLC PCB and get it made and here's the final product which arrives in a surprisingly short amount of time considering it's come from China so that's uh, the, the PCB manufactured by JLC PCB and I always think they do an absolutely superb job it's completely 100% professional uh, you can't fault it at all. So the next stage is to solder the components on and I tend to tackle it in stages, soldering on some pieces and trying them out as I go along because um, I'm never quite sure. These things are always pretty much prototypes or experimental or I've not necessarily done anything like it before. So what I'm going to do now is solder the, some of the components on and um, try it out. Okay, so here we are at the stage of putting some of the components on. I've, uh, well, I've put sockets on for most of them. I've plugged a few of the chips in. I haven't got the 16C550 yet. That hasn't arrived. Uh, soldered some of the LEDs on. Uh, some of the bits aren't there yet. Uh, I've got the power connector on. And this actually is a jumper, which you can use to control whether the power comes in through 
the the jack socket or where the power comes in through the FTDI VCC connection just there. So putting that up to the top means it's powered by the 5 volt jack. What I'm going to do first is build this part of the circuit, which is the clock circuit, uh, and probably these two switches, the rest of the circuit for these two switches here. So then I should be able to just check, have we got power and ground going to the Z80? Have we got the reset pin held high and it goes low when I press the button? Have we got a 4 megahertz or 16 megahertz or whatever I use uh, square wave coming in? Um, and then I'll start testing some other things, but I better check that's working first. So that's it for this video. I'll carry on in the next video getting the clock circuit working and getting this Z80 playground off the ground.